So recently I was asked a question, and that question was, are all reptiles cold-blooded? So first we have to recognize what we mean by cold-blooded. Like, there are many reptiles, like lizards and snakes, that'll keep their body temperature well above 100 degrees, which would kill us, a warm-blooded animal. So the important thing here is not necessarily how much heat does an organism generate, but how do they generate that heat? And the technical terms for this are going to be endothermic and ectothermic. So an endotherm is an animal that is dependent on or capable of the internal generation of heat, or a warm-blooded animal. And an ectotherm is an animal that is dependent on external sources for body heat, or a cold-blooded animal. Now humans, as endotherms use a huge amount of our caloric intake every day just keeping our bodies at 98 degrees Fahrenheit. But because ectothermic organisms get a lot of their heat from external sources like the sun or just the ambient heat in their environment, they don't have the same caloric requirements that endotherms do. Now, most clades of extant reptiles are ectothermic, but not all. The biggest exception here is going to be the only extant lineage of dinosaurs, the birds. Birds are all endothermic, and it's believed now that most, if not all, dinosaurs were also endothermic. And there are some examples within the squamate reptiles, like the lizards and the snakes, of animals showing endothermic traits, although they may not be a true endothermic organism. Like, some species of pythons have actually been known to shiver on their eggs to generate heat to maintain adequate incubation temperatures. And the Argentine black and white tegu in the winter months has been known to generate some internal heat to keep a body temperature a few degrees above the ambient temperature in their environment. And leatherback sea turtles can generate heat through their near constant muscle movement and have been measured to have body temperatures sometimes 32 degrees warmer than the water that they're swimming in. And although some of these species do show traits of endothermy, they don't truly maintain their body temperature internally. Therefore, they're still classified as ectotherms. The non-avian extant reptiles are exclusively ectothermic, as are most animals on the planet. In fact, the only two that aren't are going to be the birds and mammals. Although, like some reptiles, there are mammals that show some ectothermic traits and not exclusively endothermic, like the naked mole rats, who don't make sense in more ways than just this, but they also aren't able to maintain a steady body temperature and use the ambient heat in the tunnels around them to maintain that temperature. So, ultimately, these things exist on a spectrum. Just like almost everything that we try to categorize as humans, there's not a, there's not a yes-no flag. It, it's a spectrum of how ectothermic or endothermic are you in many cases. The other really interesting thing about this is it appears that both mammals and dinosaurs developed endothermy separately through a phenomenon called convergent evolution. So, as with everything, it's complicated. But we can pretty comfortably say that lizards, snakes, turtles, and crocodilians are cold-blooded. Most of the time. And if you learned something today, hit that like and subscribe button down below, and I'll see you next week.